There we go. Five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Journey Podcast. This is your host, Quinn Goss. We're super excited today. We hey, you already know what we do on this on this podcast. Literally, every person we talk to is either on a life journey, entrepreneur, um, doing something amazing in life, and they're sharing their story with us. Today, we have Cheyenne Bradshaw, and I'm super excited to introduce him on the show today. Um, Cheyenne literally is a North Carolina, a Clinton, North Carolina native. He is 6'5", 180. He's uh, an alumni from Wake Tech Community College. Um, and currently, so he's played, well, he's going to dive into it. He's played in a couple of different teams, but he's currently on the Fayetteville Stingers in the TBL. So he's been, he's been doing a lot of great work. And in 2013, this man has had the Male Athlete of the Year um, Award and um, Samson County Player of the Year Award, MVP, 2014 Most Improved Player of the Year. 2015 and 16, three MVP awards. My dog out here balling, just killing it. 2017 G League trial with the Green uh, Greensboro Swarm uh, Swarms, and then 2018 NBA pre draft combine, um, Greens in Greensboro, and then NBA pre draft combine as well too. So he's been doing his thing. Oh, oh, I'm almost missing some information. And then dunk contest champion champion in the EBC ECB, and then he's crushing it on YouTube as well. So. Cheyenne, great to have you on the show today, bro. Appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. Hey, man. So let's let's dive into it. Like, let's first off just a little bit, bit about like growing up in Clinton, North Carolina. What was that like? I'm from the north of New York. So like, tell me how it is uh, growing up down south. Oh, man. Um, uh, I didn't mention it to you, but I did stay in Queens, New York. And then when I left there, then I went to Clinton, North Carolina, and I, that's why I was raised. So Clinton is home for me. Um, growing up there, man, it's, it's country, uh, really not much to do. So I was always outside, just really just putting in work. And I was raised by my grandparents. So I was in the field, um, you know, picking peas and stuff like that. I stayed outside. I grew up kind of like on a farm. I had to, you know, um, be around pigs, cows, and geese, and chicken so I had to wake up every morning and feed an animal before I got on that school bus so I was raised differently than kids are raised mm -hmm. nowadays but I'm very disciplined and mature and stuff like that shout out to my grandma so and my grandpa as well RIP to him but yeah man so Clinton is different it's different and um there I played football and ran track as well okay so I just chose basketball because that's what I love I love basketball hey. well first off like respect man i think that it's, it's huge to see that um a lot of like, a lot of kids a lot of adult like folks growing up don't get that and that's i call that's peace that's peace yeah. man a lot of people don't appreciate the small things in life like being able to like learn those disciplines early on i'm guessing it's definitely helped with like within sports and what you're going to be doing beyond life um beyond sports too like it's so much that um like just waking up early like those smaller things they add up I mean, tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Like those disciplines, like as a lot of people don't have discipline nowadays, they not, not oh, consistent man. no more. Man, it's like nowadays video games, I uh, glued to the TV and just want to be in your room and stuff. I was, I, I was raised like, as soon as I woke up, like what, five something in the morning, feed, water the animals. I'm talking about, wow. man, like I was hope I didn't step, I, I was hoping I didn't step in no poop before I got on the bus, <laughs> you know what I mean? My yeah. grandma didn't, didn't care. They was just making sure the animals didn't fed. Yeah. So I had a, had to do, we had a lot of animals, bro, a lot, a lot. But um, yeah, like I played a game every once in a while, but they always kept me outside. My grandma yelled at me, cut that dang game off, get outside, do something. I love uh, it. Well, it, was, it was fun though, riding four wheelers, uh, go car, shooting guns, and just living the country life for real, for real, so. So yeah, that's why that's I think that's what made me the athlete I am now. I enjoy just being outside. So you know they say, man, the environment you're raised in kind of like it creates who you are. And yeah. that right there is a true fact right there. I was when I was in high school, I would tell kids that like high school, when I was in college, I would come back and just teach that because if you're yeah, constantly distracted playing Madden, which is you know, Madden 2K, cool, but what are you doing to better yourself in the real in the real world 
you know. Yeah. So. Don't get me wrong though. Kids do get paid nowadays off of you know video games stuff like that. That's so true. I tell my, I do tell my friends like, yo, if you ain't getting paid right now, you know, quit it, bro. Like you gotta, right. you gotta use what you have, put some value into it. You gotta make something of it. Hundred percent. Yeah. If you're not, that's one thing I used to tell my cousin. Like, you, you playing Fortnite for like twenty hours straight. <laughs> Yeah. why don't you stream on twitch and get paid and you that's know cool. this stuff you're smart you know all this so i was like let him know that and he's like no i'm okay i'm like and now he's aged but he's i think he's 15 16 dollars when he was like 12 15 16 okay. now. and now he stopped doing it like he's not on it anymore but i was like bro you could have got paid you're a really good player yeah it's like the small yeah. things like but everybody just want to have fun <laughs> you know and put yeah, the on yeah. like monetize and do all that <laughs> stuff um well, cool, man. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know, Wake Tech Community College in 2014. I mean, so you, in 2014, literally, that I was in college at that time, too. So, okay. yeah, dive into that, bro. Um, and Wake, where is Wake Tech located? Um, Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the capital. Okay. Yeah, it's like right. on the outskirts. Are you going there, bro? It is, man. Uh, <laughs> That that was where like I really found out who I was mm-hmm. as an athlete. Um, I went there. Uh, well, go back. I played power forward in high school, so we had a small school. I'm, a, I'm really a shooting guard, so when I went there, I'm posting up big guys. They're like, "Bro, you you a guard? So we gotta you gotta do something about that." So I wasn't getting that much playing time, so I had to take time to myself as athletes should and work on their game. Um, individual, like put that grind in. But that's why I did um, struggle there a lot, bro, because uh, after my first year, I broke my foot, my right foot in practice. Mm-hmm. And then I had to uh, get back mentally and stuff like that, man. So I had a, a so-called red shirt. I wasn't really too familiar with red shirting. Right. Um, but yeah, I had a broken foot and I had to take crutches and walk the class with the crutches. And it was, it was really mentally just, I was taking a downfall because I had nobody by my side to like talk to me and lift me up. So I had a, uh, so I put the work in by my own, by myself. And I was in a uh, college parking lot early in the morning doing cone drills and get my footwork right and everything, running sprints, running laps. I was getting my, I was getting back right. Makes me know like I was hundred percent ready. But then coach, he, uh, he already had a player uh, on, on, on standby, so he didn't want me anymore. So I respect that. I understand it's a business. But, yeah, um, ended up not going back to college. Started working at his, uh, at his shoe store back home in Clinton for about, wow. I think, about two or three years. Um, that's where I gained my social uh, – that, that's where I like talking to people and stuff like that. I get, gain my social respect to people and just talking to them all the time so yeah it's a it's a journey man it's a great tech i think played a big part of who i am today for sure i was the hardest worker there that's why you named that award the most the most uh improved player at weight tech yeah man even though i didn't get playing time there and i got injured i was uh, always the first to finish drills and i just love running and stuff like that i love the workout so yeah, always, I work everybody. yeah always, when, always when you went through that adversity of breaking of, you know breaking your foot like mm-hmm. what went through your mind during that time and like let people know on a podcast like what do you need to do to fight through those moments um when that happens when is it a setback like that stay stay positive that's the best thing you can do stay positive don't think nothing negative um you know what you got to do, just do it and go ahead and yeah, the doctor going to tell you to stay off of it and stuff like that. But only you know what you're capable of doing. You know what's right for your body. The doctor's going to tell you what they think. You know, they're going to tell everybody the same thing. Everybody break your foot. They're going to say stay off of it. But you know how strong you are mentally and physically. So just stay positive, put the work in. Um, outside noise, let it go. It's it's gonna be hard though. It's gonna be it's tough, man. I can't really explain too much. These people you just gotta go through it, bro. Like, but I wish that on nobody. I wish that on nobody. Just just being in the room, can't do nothing for like almost a whole semester. It sucks. But yeah, just stay positive, stay solid. 
have faith and just keep going. This part, that's just part of being an athlete. You can right. expect not to get hurt as an athlete. You gotta, you gotta be ready for that too. So that's why I say take care of your body, stretch every day. Yeah, but you can get hurt at any time. So that's hundred percent true. I appreciate you sharing yeah. that because a lot of people sure. that listen to the podcast, like some people have had it. I'm not gonna say easy in life and stuff, but it's good for just people to hear like when the folks go through adversity, how do you get through it? Because um, a lot of people see on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, the success at the end of the tunnel, they don't see like what happens in between that right. got that person to their goal. And you know, I appreciate you sharing that, bro. So so dive into a little bit about like, okay, so you you, you went through Wake Tech um, Community College, mm -hmm. and then now, um, you know, you're about to graduate. Tell me about, you know, the G League tryouts and then the dunk contest and then in diving into um, playing over, you know, out, out of the country overseas. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, after Wake Tech. Um, let me see. Got back into playing. I played a little bit of semi-pro basketball. Um, didn't like it too much because the only benefits were just, you know, film, which is good. Just right. film and just, you know, staying active and stuff like that. That's good. But it wasn't no pay. But um, so I had to figure out my worth. I had to, you know, I had to stop doing semi pro basketball and understand why I'm really like my my love for right. what I'm doing. So um yeah, I got invited to uh let me see the NBA Summer League in 2018, which is pretty dope. Um went there on a torn hamstring because <laughs> my dumb self uh accepted to uh volunteer my first slam dunk contest so when people find out i was going there they were like bro hurry you can dunk too do the slam dunk contest before you leave and i was like oh heck yeah so i, I wasn't thinking i went to my hamstring i still got the video on um, thanks to my instagram page of that when i like how i, like, I got the whole video of the dunk contest when i was born it but i ain't no winning so i was a plus but my friends were like bro you leave like next week i got to my hamstring so I still went to Vegas, NBA Summer League. Uh, yeah, didn't do anything. They just pulled me to the side. They were like, bro, you can't even. They were like, what's up, the high flying? You can't even dunk, bro. Like, you limping. And I told them straight up what happened. They were like, we well, appreciate you coming out, but can't do nothing with you right now. So let's go home and get back right. And right. Um, they gave me their business cards. Got back home. Called every single one of the business cards. Last one. The last card I picked up finally answered. Shout out to Perry Bowler. He's an agent. Uh, he's an agent for a lot of um athletes, mainly for football. Um, uh, so I, I don't know some of his clients' name, but one of them uh just got signed to the Cowboys. So shout out to Perry Bowler. He's doing his things right. He's doing his big things right now. Big things. But um, uh, yeah. After that, then. Let me see. Went to G Lee Charles Greensboro Swarms. Uh. That didn't go too well. Um, um, give people a little insight on that. When you do go to a public trial, uh, try to make sure you have an agent so he can be that voice in there in, mm. in, the, in the coach's ears. Don't just go by yourself and expect something to happen. Because I walked in the gym and it was three hundred plus players, literally, and the coaches they already knew who they wanted. You know, it's it's. Not to saying it's like this, but it's kind of, I, I look at it like a money scene. You know, you paying like 250 for a daily trial, 300 plus players, you do the math. They probably have like, probably like three or four trials a year. I don't know how to go, but they put all that money together. They use that money to pay the players, buy uniforms. So I already know how the business goes, but they already knew players at the end of the trial. He knew the player name and everything. He, I read body language. I'm like, yeah, he been with them guys. Exactly. You know I mean? So yeah, nobody made a team out of three hundred plus players. Only like three of three of them made training camp. Oh my god! Like nobody made the team. So yeah, them public trials they post on Google and stuff. Like you Google G League trials. Yeah, man, they can they can get people a lot. But don't get me wrong, you can be that star player. You can shine, but um, to play it more safe, have an agent so they they can they can know you before you get there. Right. They'll be expecting you. You know, so, so yeah, that, um, so I figured out on my own, uh, but before I left, like I said, I love the network. I'm a business person. So I got their info, their card info. 
walked it to him before I walked out the doors. And I was like, yo, um, got a card, a business card or something. I keep in contact. They were like, yeah. Took it and gave him a call. A few weeks later, uh, I had an opportunity to go um, play in Australia. That was my first okay. opportunity. I got that phone call and they were like, hey, this team in Australia wants you if you want to take it. It's not much, but I was like, I don't, I don't care if it's not much. You know what I mean? It's just a sacrifice. I got to start from somewhere. So I took that. And that's where the, uh, everything started. It was like a 20-something hour plane ride. Like, it was crazy, man. Like, But, yeah, I went. Um, and that was a that, – that was like, man, if I, if I think if I think back right now, uh, <laughs> that was my first time flying on the plane. And flying that far, yeah, I, I was kind of nervous. So that was your first time on the plane? Uh, actually, my second time I flew like one time with the uh, oh, okay. with my college basketball team, but I was like my second time. I was, like, but flying that far, like, yeah, I was nervous. I got kind of emotional and stuff. All like, the heck, am I doing? I, I was like, bro, <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for this. So you got, I started doubting myself a lot. But as I got there and got used to the system and everything, I seen the other American guys and I asked them questions. So I'm big on asking asking questions and speaking up. So. I felt more comfortable when I got to know their story. They told me how to how they got here. So I met a guy from south, right next to North Carolina. He's from South South Carolina. So that was, yeah. I felt more comfortable. He was there. He'd been in Australia for like 10 plus years, got a family and everything. I was like, oh, like, wow, I didn't know it was like that overseas. But yeah, Australia played a big part of my career. <clears throat> that was like the stepping stone of my professional career. Wow. And that's what got things really like going. Oh yeah, it got things flowing for sure. Now, what happened? Like, okay, so after Australia, I mean, you fly to Australia. You have the G League um, opportunity. Then you go to Australia, Mm -hmm. and then you. What happens after that point? What creates the other opportunities for like that, like El Salvador, Uruguay? Like, what happened there? Mm -hmm. How did you fly? Now you you flew back. Yeah, Um, Uh, things occurred. After Australia, COVID happened. Um, <laughs> freaking COVID. <laughs> COVID was a person, bro. Come on, man. I think everybody was being long. COVID, yeah, COVID like happened. Nice. Yeah, man. Everything. The gyms wasn't open. Um, to this day, I still got a suitcase full of clothes in Australia. I still got Kobe's over there, and oh. some coaches' garage still sitting there from 2019. And I don't know what's in that suitcase because I thought I was coming back, but. COVID happened. Oh my God. So um yeah, gyms was closed. There were like airports over there closed down and I couldn't go back. Like that's a business thing. They're not gonna wait on the player. They're not. They're gonna keep on like next player, like hey, but I kept telling them I was ready, I was ready, I was ready. But it's they already got players lined up. But um yeah. and I played in the lowest league in Australia. They got like five leagues in Australia. A lot of people know that. Uh every country got levels of leagues. You got the NBA, you got the NBA one, which is like the G League. And you got the uh, Queensland, and I played in the DBA. So you got you got some leagues over there. But um, yeah. Um, after Australia, uh, well, after COVID, well, during COVID, I was networking. You know, I was tapping in, uh, sending my resume and film to coaches overseas. I was just. I, I stay on the I stay on social media. So if I'm not in the gym, I'm on social media, tapping in, communicating with other coaches, even players, like let me know what's up. Right. Um so yeah, after COVID, uh let me see, I tapped in with this guy named what is his name? Ah, oh, I forget his name. Mike. That's all I know his name is Mike right now. But on Instagram, his page is like Vindicated Sports. So um, Vindicated Sports, they do like um, they do like basketball tours. I've never heard of a basketball tour. Basketball tour has been like you pay pay for your own flight and you pay for the tour. So you end up spending like two thousand dollars to go on this tour to go to wherever country is available, like, like like Mike, he hit me up and said, hey, you want to go to Uruguay, South America, or Uruguay, South America? And I was like, yeah. He said, but you have to pay for your own flight. 
and a tour fee can be from five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. So yeah, you do the math. You know, it's depending on when that tour starts. So yeah, I end up paying like almost two thousand dollars. That's a sacrifice. So you gotta you gotta invest in yourself if you want to be successful. That's just how things go. But yeah, I took that opportunity. Um, you know, flying to Europe on a basketball tour. It was cool. My hotels already, they had my hotel ready. Food was good. But it was like me and other players from all over the country. It was like eight of us and and Mike about our side. And we just played, performed in front of coaches and you know, um, scouts and wow. stuff in Uruguay. So it was an opportunity. Uh, I wasn't what they wanted. They said they were looking for uh, bigs. So I was like, well. Why did you tell me that before I got here? So, you know, businesses can be kind of uh, like, yeah, exactly. but I'm glad I got that opportunity and experience. It was pretty cool. Um, and then after that, went back home and then boom, El Salvador opportunity. They sent me the contract. I just went, I was ready to go. Played a full season there. Um, ended up being the third leading scorer in the country fourth in efficiency and like sixth in rebounding. And, and don't get me wrong, El Salvador is a, it's not a respected place to play at. I don't know why. Um, but I think one of the reasons why is it's the hardest part of playing in El Salvador over the Central America. You are going to end up playing outside. You'll probably play like three, four games outside. That's yeah. something you got used to. I mean, you got to adjust. You know, you, I'm built different. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't care. You know, my teammates were like, so three Americans to each team. I mean, yeah, three Americans to each team in El Salvador. There's like 13 teams over there. So, mm. yeah, it's like 30-something Americans over there. So, it's a, it's a group of um talent over there for sure. So, when I went, um yeah, one of our first first away games was outside. I didn't BS about it. I was, I was excited to play outside. I was like, just like playing in the park. So like it don't really matter to me. So it's it's still film. They still keep up with your stats. Still FIBA. You know you can you can once you're in the FIBA um, world, then you can Google the player name and their stats and stuff will pop up. So yeah, but play the full season there. Third in scoring, six in rebound, and fourth in efficiency. I'm very big in efficiency. You know, knowing what's a good shot, what's a bad shot. I just know how to get to my spot. Right. But um. But yeah, my team was a great team. Uh, shout out to that coach, Coach Melvin. I love the fact uh, a set of eyes from all across the world over can just see me without me being in person. Like I just love that. It's is it gives me a sort of like respect for that person. Just right. Like, shout out to the coach in Australia. Shout out to the coach in El Salvador. They gave me the opportunity. And they saw me, they looked at my film, they loved it. And they, like, it's just crazy how things work nowadays, man. People love your game and they, they trust you to, you know, do, do big things for their team and be that guy for the team to help them win games. And it's all about building that uh, relationship, you know. So now the coach, you know, Salvador, he wants me to, he's begging me to come back. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, he's, like, he's begging me to come back. Oh, seriously. He, he He's even asked me to bring a friend that got the same drive as me. So that's how big the trust is. So I was like, wow. Um, their first game over there is Monday. Um, and then their season ends somewhere during the summer. Then the next season starts back up in September. So I may go back in September. I may bring a friend with me. I don't know. That's, that's something to think about later on. But yeah, yeah really Salvador played a big part. <laughs> it's amazing over there, man. It's a, it's just crazy. <laughs> that's what's up, bro. Well, I got to say, like that's well. It sounds like you have a lot of your work ethic. Again, it comes back to discipline. Another thing we talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. Your discipline, your work ethic, has gotten you through a lot of these places. And even hearing that, a referral like that, like, hey, we want you back because of how hard you work and like we want you to bring someone else that's just like that's an re- amazing recommendation to get from somebody that says a lot about you and, and just you telling sure. me and learning about you from online and um hearing you talk like that's 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 huge bro so i mean keep keep that going don't ever lose that i think that's an amazing feature to have on yourself to be able to 
that push you through anything in life. Like, tell me a little bit about how that helps you through whatever you do in your life. Oh, man, just being yourself plays a big part. Just being yourself is also how you were just raised. It starts from how you was raised, mature, disciplined, which is me. Um, once you, once you just, it, it's it's natural. Just be yourself, you know. Be be respectful. You're gonna treat someone how you want to be treated. So once once that's once that's in you, I mean, you're capable of doing whatever you want. You're capable to go get whatever job you want. You know, yeah. once you gain them, be respectful and stuff like that. But yeah, that carry on to this having that relationships positive relationship with someone it, like once again it, it's, it's crazy i think about it to this day like building a relationship with someone already in a whole other country like country like it's just crazy and like we click just like that like that's like i, I love that coach you know salvador like he, we just mess each other on messenger his son called me on new year's oh, wow. <laughs> you know his little son like happy new year's bro and like not just building a relationship with him but building a relationship with his family you know, his family loved me. They, they, it's open arms, but at the end of the day, always keep it business, you know, keep it business. But once you get this, it's always, it's, it's open arms, bro. Like once you be yourself, be respectful and they see that you're disciplined and stuff like that. Yeah. They're going to open their arms. You know, they're going to bring you in their crib, have dinner with them and stuff like that. Yeah. They speak Spanish, but uh, the coach, he knew English as well. So Okay. You know, his wife knew Spanish, so but they they understood and I understood and stuff like that. So and his his wife, shout out to his wife, man. She's he's man, she she loved me, bro. Like dude, I'm uh make this short. There's one game. Um I was going off, I was going crazy, my shoestring popped. My shoestring broke in my shoe. It's never happened before. I'm Sorry, looking down, really? I'm like, yo, yeah, I'm like, why my shoe is still loose? I keep tying it and I look closely, it just broke. So coach called a quick timeout. Coach like, bro, are you bringing other shoes? I was like, it's at the my other shoes at the hotel. And he was like, Coach, I think it was like adios mio. So I think that mean like, oh my god, or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was like, he was like, ah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, ah, man. So I was like, shoot. Um, so I had to sit out for like a minute. Next thing you know, the coach wife comes out of nowhere with her shoestring. She took, she takes her shoestring out her shoe, and gives it to me. She like comes out, out of the stands, bro. I was like, I'm looking at her like, <laughs> that's crazy. So I put it in my shoe and next thing I get back out there and I kept getting buckets. So I'm like, yeah, and after the game, I took it out, get back to her. And she I seen her put it back in her shoe. So it's like that, that like little things like that. It's like, you know, I'm like, wow, like I'm always gonna remember that for the rest of my life. It's like, 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 I don't know, it's crazy. They they just no, they just see like, like they love it just like I love it. So right. they going, they going to do what they got to do. You know what I mean? So I think back home, I don't think nobody would have done that. <laughs> nobody would have done that here back home. Take their shoestring out their shoe and give it to me. Like, nah. But yeah, um, but yeah, it, it, it does play the big part on um, gaining relationships, a positive relationship with those folks, man, even the teammates, man, they, I love them guys, man, but, you know, like I said, it's a business, they understand too, I'll probably never go back and play for that team, because once you, like, know your worth, you know, I mean, unless he's going to pay me more, so, but um, there's also other teams and coaches in that league that's been hitting me up also, <laughs> so, you know, so they, they, they basically, you know, Still in, still in that coach players like me and stuff. So like, yeah, there's one coach now. He didn't send me hotel. The he didn't send me the hotel and stuff where I'd be staying in if I wasn't come back. So yeah, so like, so like, I never spoke to him in person, but he heard positive things about me. So now yeah. he's interested. Like, so like, once again, like, once you be yourself and you know be respectful and stuff, it does take you a lot of places and it, and it does go word of mouth and stuff like that it does get out there so that's huge I'm, I'm a big believer in that too myself is like mm -hmm. the more you are consistent yeah like you're not disrespecting people you're not being mm -hmm. negative to folks like it comes back to you naturally and that god just yeah. like continues to bless you 
um, over and over again. So like with the right people, right connections. Right. So like not, I, I totally agree with you on that, bro. But it's good to see like what it's cool to just hear like the timeline of how things have happened. But like you just yeah, kept going true. and kept trying, and you still are. You're still going and you're trying. And um, most people just give up. Facts, and I helps you out with your next opportunity too. That's one thing a lot of athletes don't know. Like in order to move on, they have to know your history. They have they gonna give that because your last last person or player or team or organization that you play with, they're going to give them a call. Okay, they want to know what type of player are you. You show them that the practice on time, things like that on time. Right. On time <laughs> is not practice at eight p.m. and you get there at eight p.m. That is not on time. As an athlete, professional athlete, on time is get there an hour or 30 minutes before practice. That's on time. So a lot of athletes don't really understand that. You got to be ready at 8 p.m. I get there. You got to be ready at 8 p.m. Like ready like, to go. Shoes yeah. on. Yes, you got to be ready to go. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's, that plays a big part on going to your next opportunity. They want to know what type of player are you. So. I love that. Well, and that's a, thanks for that sharing that advice, like showing up early for the opportunity yeah. and keep me doing that every single day. Mm-hmm. Every single day. Every single day, consistency. Yeah. Um, well, what would you say when it comes down to it? Your outlook for the your your outlook for the next couple of years, and then um, close this out with a quote on what you would like to share with the crowd in regards to your overall journey, just something positive that's going to help impact their lives. Um, let me see my outlook for this. Uh, like I said, I'm still grinding. I'm still in the mix of things. Uh, I still have, um, I wouldn't say, well, in order to have a dream, you got to have goals. You know, a dream with no goals is just a dream. You're just mm. dreaming, you know, so there, that's a quote right there. There you go. <laughs> you can say for the end, but there's a quote right there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, you got to have goals. Set goals for yourself. Yeah, everybody want to be a millionaire. Everybody want to be in the league and be successful, own businesses. But you got to set goals. You got to set goals. What you going to do to get that million dollars? You know, mm. sit down, write it down and stuff like that. You know, it's good to imagine things, but don't, don't, don't get too, you know, like, lost in it like just oh i i know what i'm gonna do i know what i'm gonna do but what have you done to get there so far like what have you done a lot of people don't want to say oh nothing yet but you just dreaming you're still dreaming right now and time is ticking time is ticking we we we're on this earth we on this earth we live on this earth one time one time so that's what we know so but um i would say uh Oh yeah, G League is my biggest goal right now. G League, um, like I said, yes, I'm in the overseas world, um, FIBA and stuff. And with the Fabulous Stingers, Stinger, shout out to the Fabulous Stingers for um, signing me. Um, I did decline some overseas contracts so to play with the Fabulous Stingers because I want to play here at home, and so my family and friends could get to see me. I think the last time they saw me play was probably in high school, so it's been years, years ago. But um. Yeah, shout out to them for signing me. Uh, first home game is is coming up Friday, and we have a home game Saturday. It's back to back, but yeah, I'm gonna see where this uh this team takes me. Um, like I said, stay positive, respectful, and just stay, just stay like just just be in the grind, bro. I'm all about that. Uh, I'm always the first one in the gym when it comes to practice. They they see me in there working out before practice even starts. So, yeah, I'm going to get my Kobe on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, G League is definitely the, the main goal for me. I think – I'm not going to say, yes, yes, the NBA is the main, main goal, but, like I say, it's a step. It's a step. You can't sit there and say, yeah, I want to be like Jay-Z. No, how about you say, yes, I want this song I'm about to put out to go, you know, platinum or something like that. It's a step. Um. So yeah, well, I think once I get in the G League, that'll be like a huge step so, huge stepping stone for me. And I think I'll be um getting that call up to the NBA. That's the most that's the most confidence I have um with um with my capability and stuff on the court. Hmm. But uh yes, time is ticking. But at the end of the day, um if I keep doing what I'm doing, 
also one of my main hidden goals is inspiring. I think as mm. long as I've inspired the youth or inspired those that do look up to me, I think I've done my job. You know, you gotta look at it as the life life perspective. Like, what's what's really what's really big? You know, as long like I can pass away, but guess what? They gonna mm. people that inspired me. I like I know I left something behind because I inspired. Inspired plays a big part. But whatever you do, it ain't got it don't have to be sports. You can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can own a business. But when people see what you're doing, they might want to do that also because they seen you do it. Right. So in, inspiration plays a big part in my career. Um, I do love doing camps and stuff like that. The last camp I did was in Alaska. So just seeing the reaction and seeing the kids say, oh, I want to be a basketball player, that right there goes a long, long way. It's, what that that goes a long way because you could change a kid's life just because i showed it to the camp this kid they see me and they heard my story now they want to be a basketball player years from now i can be an old man i can look back and be like yo see them kids on tv and i'm like wow like that that just plays a big part um so yeah that's that's it right there um and you got my quote <laughs> Yeah. No, I appreciate it, bro. Like that's that's huge stuff because I feel like a lot of people. Well, first off, a lot of people need to hear that, and just your story resonates just with the person that continues to push through regardless of like what has been what has occurred. You just mm -hmm. continue to keep going, and God's bless you like, with more opportunities, and just keep going. Like I know that you probably heard it. Just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Like you're really inspiring people, though. Like when you yeah, do that, sure. like and folks that. Right now, they're on that the brinker brim of making a decision of keeping their job or leaving or doing X, Y, Z with their fit. Like th this inspires folks to keep going. And like that's why I make this podcast for this reason to share these stories to to help change lives. And it's huge. Like you have a like that that grit story, like the story of the the guy who wants to win and is gonna keep going and like has consistency along with it. So I love it, bro. Good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. So go ahead and we'll finish out here. Tell tell, okay. them, tell us a little bit about your YouTube vlog that you were talking about earlier. And then also let them know where to follow you on Instagram. Uh, YouTube vlog. I'm not consistent <laughs> on it. And consistent does play a big part in whatever you do in life. But YouTube, it's a whole different world, bro. You got to be consistent. I'm just supposed to post like two videos a day type thing. If you're trying to make it on YouTube, that's not me right now. Uh, I probably won't ever get there because I don't really take YouTube as serious. YouTube for me is just um, something I want to keep as memories. I just like posting things up there so I can look back years later and be, and be like, yeah, I remember I did that. And just look at the video. So I'm not really yeah. into the subscribers and likes. It would be good to you yes. know, get paid on YouTube. It would be nice. But as of right now, I just post to like, like, uh, bring people along my journey that's why i like recording and, you know keep it as memories and stuff but youtube channel is cheyenne bradshaw s-h-i-a-n then bradshaw um uh you can also subscribe instagram name cheyenne got bounce s-h-i-a-n and got bounce uh i'm always on instagram I'm always posting 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 so so yeah so good stuff well um anything else you want to leave the people with before we have off um stay like i said stay be yourself stay positive and one big thing trust in god keep that faith and you can do anything anything's possible once you have god by your side anything 100 percent. so this bro keep keep the push going um hey everyone cheyenne bradshaw Again, born in North Carolina, Clinton, North Carolina, Wake Tech Community College, um, multiple awards, beast in what he's done over his life um, thus far and is continually going. Um, a good luck at with the Fayetteville Stingers and continue to just keep being an inspiration, bro. Like, for real, for real. And keep sharing your story, like, to a lot of people because I think that's going to help a lot of, like I said, a lot of folks to just do what their situations they're going through and it'll help inspire. Your story can help change lives. For sure, man. Appreciate it. You keep going, too. Thanks, bro. This is Q Goss with the Life Journey Podcast, and we're out.